One of the things that Solomon has actually already been doing some, um, we know that Solomon did a lot of this in the book of Proverbs, but one thing that Solomon did quite a bit in Proverbs, and he's doing in Ecclesiastes, as we're going to see today in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, is really talking about the blessings and the success that wisdom brings versus the failure and problems and destruction that foolishness, that folly brings. And that's what we see, I think, here in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. If you want to turn there with me as we continue in the book of Ecclesiastes, we're going to be in chapter 10 today, or you can just listen along. But he has really a, a series of Proverbs, if you want to call them Proverbs, sayings, uh, kind of like we had seen back in chapter 7 where, you know, Solomon had, you know, just a bunch of quick um, pointers about wisdom. And really in chapter 10, he has quite a few about wisdom versus folly, and foolishness. So let's look at this together. He starts right off the bat in verse 1 talking about dead flies in some perfumer's ointment. That sounds lovely, right? He says, dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul odor. So if you had some ointment, you know, a perfumer who would make up these concoctions, these ointments, and they would smell. I mean, just like, you know, today we've got uh, all kinds of things and perfumes and smells and well, you get a fly that gets in that, it dies and, you know, then that, that fly rots in the, the perfume and then he says, well, it's going to start making, giving off a, a bad odor instead of a good one. Well, he says that's what folly does to somebody who was once wise and honorable. He says, so does a little folly, just a little bit of folly, a little bit of foolishness, a little bit of sin, corrupt one who was respected for their wisdom and honor. Just a little bit of folly, just some foolishness, sin, just a little bit of sin, can ruin our good name or our good reputation. If we had been known as one who was wise and honorable, well, folly, foolishness, sin will cause our reputation to be affected, to stink, to hurt, to not be good. And he warns us of that. But he says in verse 2, a wise man's heart is at his right hand or will lead him to the right. A wise man's heart will lead him to the right, but a fool's heart to the left. So wisdom will lead us down the right path. Wis the wisdom of God will lead us the right way, but foolishness will take us the wrong way. And then about a fool, that even when a fool walks along the way, he lacks sense, he lacks wisdom, and he shows everyone that he is a fool. You know, when someone is acting foolishly, when somebody is being foolish, people will see it. People will know it. And so a fool walks along lacking sense, lacking wisdom, and everybody can see it. Everybody knows it. He's proving himself to be a fool. Well, then verse 4, he says, If the spirit of the ruler rises against you, so whatever ruler this may be, king, governor. So if the spirit of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post. For conciliation pacifies great offenses, the new King James says. Meaning that, that conciliation is has to do with healing or as the ESV says, calmness. So when the spirit of a ruler rises against you, do not be hasty, do not leave, do not fight, do not argue for healing or for calmness will pacify great offenses. 
n not reacting in such a way to stir up strife and contention in the ruler's anger, but to be calm, to seek healing, to seek to pacify and calm down and fix the situation. But then verse 5, Solomon notices something. He says he has done through this book of Ecclesiastes when he points out, as he calls them, evils. An evil, there is an evil that I have seen under the sun. And here it is. As if it was an error proceeding from the ruler. Like this is not the way it's supposed to be. This is wrong. This is backwards. This is not good. He says that folly is set in great dignity or folly. And those who are foolish are put in places of honor while the rich sit in a lowly place. I have seen servants on horses while princes walk on the ground like servants. What Solomon seems to be referring to here is not anything, you know, not saying, Solomon here is not saying that people should be judged on whether they're rich or they're poor. That's not what this is saying. This is saying that people who are following folly, people are getting positions of authority that should not be there. And they're not are not good choices for those positions. Instead of those who should be there in those positions. And so for whatever reasons, favoritism or whatever it is never good when people are put into positions that they don't deserve, that they have no right to, or that they're not ready for, or that they would not be good for. And so Solomon warns about that. Well, then verses 8 and 9 are kind of interesting in 10, but I think that verses 8, 9, and 10 actually all go together with the conclusion being at the end because Solomon seems to give some random uh, points here. He says, he who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. He who quarries stones may be hurt by them, and he who splits wood may be endangered by it. And if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he may use even more strength. Well, you think, well, what in the world does this have? have to do with anything. Well, it has to do with the last thing he says there in verse 10. But wisdom brings success or wisdom is an advantage to those who use it. And it refers to all of these situations that when you're digging a pit, well, wisdom is going to tell you, watch out, be careful. Same thing with tearing down a wall or a house or whatever. Do it carefully. Watch out for snakes. Those who are quarrying stone, be careful. You're splitting wood. Be careful. Wisdom will tell you to be careful in the right way, a good way to do it. Like wisdom will tell you that if your axe is dull, you need to sharpen it so your work is easier, not harder. Wisdom brings success. Wisdom is an advantage to those who use it, he says. Well, then another one, beginning in verse 11, a serpent may bite when it is not charmed. The babbler is no different. Now, this kind of depends on your translation because some versions word this a little bit differently and kind of could change the meaning here. I'm going with today the New King James Version, and I'm just going to stick with that because I think it still makes a point. And it's that a serpent may bite when it is not charmed. Those who, you know, quote unquote, charm snakes and tame snakes and control snakes and they do it and they, you know, charm them they so that they can, you know, uh, do an act with them or grab them or whatever. But if you don't charm a snake, and you just go trying to mess with this thing, it's going to bite you. A babbler, right? Um, a babbler, if you don't treat them carefully, if you're not wise in your dealings with a babbler, then they will bite you like a snake would and maybe say some things against you. 
And so something to think about there as he says, the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious. The words of a wise man's mouth um, are, are truly gracious, a blessing. They bring a blessing. Wise words do. But the lips of a fool will swallow him up, will destroy him. Fool, a fool destroys himself by his foolish talk. The words of his mouth begin with foolishness, and the end of his talk is raving madness. Talking about a fool. That a fool, verse 14, also multiplies words. No man knows what is to be. Who can tell him what will be after him? Nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to be after us. And But fools are good about talking about things they don't understand. And the labor of fools wearies them, for they do not even know how to go in and out of a city or go to the city. A fool's labor will weary them. Again, through this we've seen the blessing of wisdom, the success that it brings, the protection it is, versus the, uh, the folly of foolishness and the foolishness of folly. As Solomon has been telling us, and then he has a few more. In verse 16, Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child and your princes feast in the morning. When your king is foolish. When the princes are foolish. And they're just living it up, being reckless, being careless. No discretion, no wisdom, no sense of you know what is proper, what is right. But blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles and your princes feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. Blessed is a land when the rulers are wise and use discretion and do things in a way that is appropriate and right and good for all, not in reckless abandon and foolishness and drunkenness. He says, well, then verse 18, he brings up laziness because of laziness, the building decays and through idleness of hands, the house leaks. Laziness, idleness brings decay and ruin and destruction because in our life, if we're lazy and idle, we're not working on things, we're not fixing things, we're not taking care of things, and they fall apart. That's what's going to happen in our lives if we give in to laziness and idleness. Then verse 19, a feast is made for laughter, and wine makes merry, but money answers everything. And we say, whoa, well, this is a little backwards. You know, aren't we taught and we try to teach people that money isn't the answer to everything, that money money is not everything. Well, I think Solomon is not making a philosophy of life here that life is all about money. I think he is simply making a statement that just as a feast is for laughter, having a good time, and wine as well makes merry, money is what buys the things we need. Money answers everything our needs our situations things to feast and, and laugh and have things money pays the bills so there is an extent where we've got to have money not that that's what life is about but things do cost money and we've got to have money to be able to get things and do things um, that we need in our life and then finally verse 20 Solomon gives a warning, do not curse the king, even in your thoughts. Do not curse the rich, even in your own bedroom. For a bird of the air may carry your voice, and a bird in flight may tell the matter. You ever heard the expression, a little bird told me? Number one, I would argue there is a sense that we shouldn't be you know, cursing anybody Anyways, but whatever kind of talk we're doing, talking uh, badly about gossip, we should not be gossiping either. 
But we got to remember the things we say can become known to some and can become gossip and can spread to others. And so, excuse me, Solomon is really giving us a warning about being careful of what we say, how we say it, when we say it, who we say it to, realizing words have great effect. And if we're saying things, negative things, and it gets out to those people, people that we said them about, then that's obviously not going to be good and cause issues. So a lot of different things to think about, to meditate on here in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. All in all, I think Solomon helping us see the blessings and success that wisdom will bring versus the pain and foolishness or the pain and sorrow and destruction that foolishness and folly will bring. We've got to choose to walk in the wisdom of God. Choose the path of wisdom, the path of right. And let's all stay off of the path of foolishness and what is evil in the sight of God. And our life will be better for it now, but especially when we get into eternity and where we will spend eternity. Let's continue to strive after wisdom. Walk in the wisdom of God, and we will truly be blessed by God. God bless.